the Upanishad series. Darkness, the essence of light. This is a strange. All these speak, the scriptures speak of light, and I am speaking of darkness. The existence is nine parts out of ten is darkness, and only one part out of ten is light. Light defines you, gives you a definition. Darkness di dissolves all divisions, all definitions. Everything gets dissolved into it. Darkness is the essence of life. Sometimes I go when I spoke on. Life, love, and light. During one of the talks in DC, I spoke that all life begins in darkness. Seed is planted in the darkness. The interaction between ovum and sperm happens in the darkness. And when the seed is planted in the womb of the earth, you cannot force onto the seed when to blossom. It uses its intuition, and when intuition permits and the time is right, it blossoms. This journey that was in darkness begins to come in the light. Darkness is the essence of life. Darkness is life giving and life enhancing both. A seed is planted in the womb of the earth. There alone the intuition of the seed blossoms as it sprouts one day. First growth always happens in the dark. Ovum merges with the sperm cells in the darkness to begin its journey. Seed of love is planted in the dark caves of lust, and from there it begins to grow. The journey begins with darkness, but it must continue. Nine parts of the cosmos is gripped in darkness, and only one tenth part is in light. Darkness has another quality; it breeds fear. Fear is accident, and we are unfriendly with existence, unfriendly with darkness. Fear grips. Be friendly with darkness. And you will experience something that you have never experienced before. It is because of the fear of darkness that God was conceived as light. God is neither light nor darkness. When we say God is light, it is against darkness. This is duality. God is either none or both. All ancient scriptures and priests teach one thing: to be afraid of God. Because of this fear, you could not establish a loving communion with existence of God. Wherever there is a fear, love cannot blossom. You did not understand the true nature of darkness. Instead of the darkness. An ignorance fear emerged. In the process, both darkness and fear.
here became synonymous and your life started revolving around fear. Religions evolved around fear. In the process you could not be freed of inner fear and the outer darkness that you see is the reflection of your inner darkness. All outside fear has emerged from deep within you. Let us do an experiment. This is the way of the science. Then naturally you will come to know there is only one realm of unbounded godliness. This is ritualistic in nature. When there is no fear within, all dualities vanish, then both light and darkness vanish. You have imagined light. But that which you call light or know as light is not really light. You call lighted object as light. Then how can you be restful to remain equipoised under all dualities is the meaning of the flowering of the being or awakening. When you feel happy in light and effort in darkness, then your austerity or practice is incomplete. But this is what naturally happens. When Wherever any boundary is drawn around you, wherever your mind is divided, you can never be free from duality. You are taught that the spiritual journey is from darkness to light. There is oft used important scriptural injunction Asatoma Sadgamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya. We interpret this from the darkness to light to lead us. Darkness should be more understood as fear. This is partial and wrong. You need to know both darkness and light. You cannot understand one against the other. Instead, you have to know both in their true nature. The moment you know both light and darkness, you will attain freedom. Just knowing one, you remain gripped by the other. Going beyond light and darkness transcends you both aspects of duality, good and bad, right and wrong, day and night, male and female. Then you are spontaneous about both darkness and light. You can live life natural and spontaneous. This spontaneity is your nature and the way of life. There has been one very old ascetic group. Probably you have not heard about it. This school was known as Essenes. It was destroyed by Christianity. Jesus studied in that school. He belonged to the Essenes group. The Essenes group is the only one all over the world who says God is absolute darkness. God is absolute 
darkness. The Holy Quran says God is light. The Upanishad says God is light. The Bible too conceives God as light. Only the Essenes group in the world says God is absolute blackness, absolute darkness, just infinite black night. This is against your normal understanding. But it is very beautiful, strange, yet very beautiful and meaningful as well. You must, you must understand the meaning. Then this technique will be helpful. And you can weave a meditation around it. Because this is the technique used by the essences to enter darkness and become one with it. Introspect. Why has God been symbolized everywhere as light? Not because God is light, not because man is afraid of darkness. This is human fear. We like light and we are afraid of darkness. So we cannot conceive God as darkness, as blackness. This is human fear conception. We conceive God as light because we are afraid of darkness. Our gods are created, emerged, evolved out of our fear. We give them shape and form. That shape and the form is given by us. It shows nothing about God but more about us. They are our creators. We are afraid of darkness. So God is light. But these techniques belong to the other school. Essenes say that God is darkness and there is something precious in it. Something precious in it. That shape, one thing darkness is eternal. Remember darkness is eternal. Light comes and goes, but darkness remains. In the morning after the night, sun rises, its rays fill the cosmos. And by evening, sun begins to set. For darkness, there is nothing like rising of the sun of darkness and setting. It is always there. It never rises and never sets. Light comes and goes. Darkness remains. Light always has some source. It comes from sun. With the rising of the sun, the lights begin to fill the atmosphere. It has its use, it has its significance. But I want you to be befriend with darkness as well, so that you can live a life beyond the duality, only that which is sourceless can be infinite and eternal. Light creates a certain disturbance. That is why you cannot sleep in the night when the light is on. In order for you to sleep, you have to take off the light. Light creates a tension. Darkness is relaxation and it gives you total Relaxation. Have you ever noticed such a simple phenomenon? When you are going to sleep, you must take off the light. 
because with the lights on you cannot fall asleep. But why are we afraid of darkness? Because light appears to us as life it is and darkness appears to us as death it is. We have given our own symbols to it. As the people advance in age, they become afraid of certain colors. Black color, the dark, symbolizes darkness. It symbolizes death. People are afraid. They would not use the black clothes. They will not use the black color cars. Life comes through light and when you die it appears. You have fallen into eternal darkness. That's why we paint death as black and black has become therefore the color of mourning. God is light and Death is black. But these are our own projections out of fear. Actually, actually, darkness has infinity, infinite nature. Light is limited. Darkness seems to be womb out of which everything arises and also into which everything dissolves one day. Essenes took this standpoint. It is very beautiful and helpful as well. Because if you can love darkness, you will become unafraid of death. If you can enter into darkness, and you can enter only when there is no fear. You will attain to total relaxation. If you can become one with darkness, you are dissolved. This is surrender. Now there is no fear. Because if you have become one with darkness, you have become one with death as well. You cannot die now because you have known death. You have become deathless. Darkness is deathless. Light is born and dies. Darkness simply is. In order to understand and attain oneness with darkness, Certain meditations have been devised in Vidyan Bhairav Tantra and otherwise and Sufis use one of this meditation as well. This meditation goes in certain steps. During the dark night Enter the blackness as the form of forms. You have to do the certain things. First, a step is to start steering so that darkness enters your eyes. A stair, you are asked to stare at the light, at the flame, at an object, as a part of meditation. This is a different kind of meditation to attain oneness with darkness. A stare in darkness so that the darkness enters your eyes. Continue to stare for three minutes. Remember when you close your eyes, 
is darkness all around. And it is in that state something begins to happen. And after this, you lie down and feel as if you are near your mother. Darkness is the mother. The entire existence mothers you in myriad ways. Think when there was darkness, what was there? You cannot think of anything other than darkness. If everything disappears, what will there be still? Darkness will be there. Darkness is the mother, the womb. So lie down and feel that you are lying near the womb of your mother. And it will become real, it will become warm, and sooner or later you will start feeling that the darkness, the womb, is enveloping you from all sides and you are completely covered from all sides you are in it. Third, as you are moving, going to work, eating, doing whatsoever, carry a patch of darkness within you. The darkness that has entered in you, just carry it. As we were discussing about the method of carrying a flame, carry darkness. And as I said to you, if you carry a flame, you will feel you are light. Your body will start radiating a certain strange light. And those who are sensitive will start feeling it in the same way it will happen with darkness. If you carry darkness within you, your whole body will become so relaxed and calm and cool. Something that you have never felt that it will be felt and as when you carry light with you there are people who get attracted to you when you carry darkness within you the people will try to escape you they will become afraid and scared they will not be able to bear this silence of the being that you carry. First, the darkness brings utter relaxation in you. There is a silence surrounding you and it becomes unbearable to them. If you are sitting down silently, you are not speaking. You become very unbearable to the people. If you carry darkness within you, those who are afraid of darkness will try to escape from you. They will not come near you. And for that matter, everyone is afraid of darkness. You will start feeling that friends are leaving you. Your family gets disturbed. When you are so silent, you have entered a pool of coolness while everyone else is agitated and excited. It will be difficult for them to look into your eyes because your eyes will become deep like valleys and abyss. If somebody looks into your eyes, he will become dizzy. 
such a deep abyss will be felt there. It will be a transforming, but you will feel many things. It will be impossible then for you to get angry, carrying darkness within, you cannot at all get angry. Carrying a flame, you will, you can be angry, very easily. Carrying a flame, you can be angry very easily, more easily than ever, because the flame can excite you. Carrying a flame, you will feel more sexual than ever, because the flame will excite you. It will create passion, but carrying darkness within you, you will feel a sense of a sexuality, a state, when sex becomes meaningless, a state beyond the attraction of sex. You will not feel sexual, you will not be able to easily get into anger, passion will disappear, you will not feel that you are a man or a woman, you will feel that those words have become now irrelevant for you, you simply are. Carrying darkness within you for the whole day will help you very much because then when you contemplate or meditate on darkness in the night. You are filled with darkness, every pore of your body, every cell of your body is filled with darkness. You feel so relaxed, try it. You will feel so relaxed, everything in you will slow down, that is why the deeper meditations are done during the night and there is no light turned on. Whether it is Tahajul prayer or early morning dawn prayer or anything else, this all happens when you are filled with darkness. You will feel so relaxed. Everything in you will be slowed down. You will not be able to run. You will walk. And that walk also will be slowed down. You will walk slowly. Just as a pregnant woman walks. You will walk slowly, very carefully because you are carrying something deep within you and quite the opposite will happen when you are carrying a flame within you. Your walk will become faster, rather you would like to run. When people carry the Olympic flame, they run. There will be more movement, you will become more active, carrying darkness, you will be relaxed. Others will start feeling that you are lazy. In the days when this experiment is being done, You become so lazy. This is the term that the others use and we have no other option for it. As if you have entered in a different state. Try it. 
It is one of the most beautiful experiences in life to carry darkness in your womb, to become dark, walking, eating, sitting, doing whatsoever. Remember the darkness is filled in you. You are filled with it. And then you see how things change. You cannot get excited. You cannot be very active. You cannot be tensed. Your sleep will become so deep that one by one the dreams will begin to disappear. And whole day you move as if you are intoxicated. Sufis have used this meditation. A particular sect of Sufis and those Sufis are known as drunken ones. They are drunk with darkness. You can be drunk with pristine wine, Tawajjul. They make holes in the ground and they lie down in the holes every night and they meditate lying down in their holes. Meditating in darkness, becoming one with it. <coughs> And their eyes will show that they are intoxicated. When you go to Rosa Sharif, the shrine complex in Sarin, that contains the shrine of Hazrat Sheikh Ahmad Faruqi. Mujaddad Alif Sani Razi Allah Ta'ala Unu is Khalifa Khas second son as a Khwaza Muhammad Masoom and the grandson as a Sheikh Safuddin Razi Allah Ta'ala Unu they have a shine on the ground that is the real shine. All the others, the three levels, the other two levels are made for the general public. There is a narrow passage for going into those homes. The place where Sheikh used to stay in the moments of solitude The passage is very narrow. The small staircase, only one person can enter through those holes at a the time. These were the strange places made to encounter, to be one with darkness. Some of you had the occasion of visiting those shrines, those places, sacred ones. You have to carry the light in order to go inside and you remember the shake you go only to visit that for a certain period of time. Maybe just you make an entry and exit. Maybe you stay there for 10-15 minutes. But Sheikh Mujaddad Alif Sani Razi Allah Ta'ala Sheikh Hazrat Khwaza Muhammad Masoom Razi Allah Ta'ala Sheikh Safuddin Razi Allah Ta'ala used to spend most of 
their time in solitude into those dark caves. The ancient sages spend their lives in solitude into the caves and yet still our so-called religious custodians keep on preaching that God is light. It is journey from darkness to light. They are these Sufis are drunk with darkness. They make hole in the ground. They lie down in the holes every night and they meditate lying down in their homes, meditating in darkness. When you enter into, when the meditation begins, first thing we do, we take out, take off the lights. We close our eyes. We are imbibing the darkness within us. And when you emerge out of meditation, there is relaxation. Meditation is the process of communing with darkness. Process of communing, becoming one, be friendly with darkness. become one, one with it and their eyes will show as if they are intoxicated. You will feel from their eyes such deep relaxation, something that you have not known, such a relaxed vibration overflows through those eyes that it can happen only if you are deeply intoxicated or feeling very sleepy. Only then can your eyes show that expression. They are known as drunken Sufis. They are drunk with darkness. This is one of the meditation going, meditating, being one with darkness, very simple, yet still very profound. Do this meditation. Sometimes people ask, how long are you to meditate? For how many days? When you have to take food, meditation is the food for the being. It is not the medicine. It is the nourishment for the soul. Just as food is the nourishment for body, when do you take? And how long you have to take this food? You never ask this question. But you ask the question about meditation as if you are taking a medicine and you are going through a seven days course of the medicine. Meditation is the nourishment for the body, for the being, through the body. In the same way certain meditation techniques which are mentioned to you given to you from time to time. These are like the nourishment for the being. But the nourishment, because you have not known being, you cannot encounter with that. Your only connection with the being is through the body and the instruments of the body. 
So the instruments of the body are used for those techniques. Have you ever asked anyone that do I have to bathe every day with soap? It is a natural process. So too, it is necessary each day as you interact into the outer world of objects and beings, you gather dust of your clothes. These needs to be washed. Your body gathers 